I'm going to show you how to generate readable text on your AI images and up your AI game with Deep Floyd IF. This tutorial is brought to you by RunPod. Go to runpod.everlyheights.tv to spin up a stable diffusion server in just a couple of minutes. Hey, it's Bill Meeks here for Building Dreams, where I help you use the latest AI technology to build dreams of your own, just like I'm using them to build the first animated series set in my Everly Heights universe, a sitcom called Very Special. One of the challenges you'll have to overcome when using AI art generators is that generating images with text on them, well, it sucks. Like can't spell a word in any language kind of sucks. Deep Floyd IF is an AI model that lets you add text to images in a way that's easy to read and looks natural. It's different from other AI art models because it generates readable text on your AI images, even if the image is complex or has a lot of details. For example, I used it to make this image of a bear holding a sign with the timely message, bears are people too, at a protest. And the bear's protest sign looks beautiful. So Deep Floyd IF is a really cool tool that can save you a lot of time in Photoshop remaking the gibberish text that Stable Diffusion usually spits out. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a custom Jupyter notebook I created to run Deep Floyd on RunPod. This file should also work on other Jupyter notebooks, but I customized this from the official notebook specifically for RunPod. Okay, on to Deep Floyd IF. While Deep Floyd is a super powerful model, it isn't integrated into Stable Diffusion itself yet. So if you want to try it out, you'll have to run through a couple of hoops to get it set up. I'll be deploying a Deep Floyd Jupyter notebook using our fantabulous sponsor RunPod's virtual servers to test things out. This will make sure I don't screw up anything on my main production machine, too, which is always a plus. Now, to walk through this tutorial, you're going to have to download the Jupyter Notebook file, which I've included a link to down in the description. You can try to install it on your local machine, but because this software is so new, it's not quite as efficient as normal stable diffusion. A virtual service like RunPod is probably the way to go. Now, before you use this, you're going to have to authenticate with Hugging Face, which is where the model's stored. So go over to huggingface.co slash deepfloyd slash if dash i dash xl dash v1.0 and accept the license agreement and then set up your API key through Hugging Face. If you don't know how to set up your API key, just make sure you're logged into Hugging Face, then go to huggingface.co slash settings slash tokens. And there, uh, you'll see here I have my BillBot token ready to go. Okay, now it's time to spin up a server over on RunPod so we can deploy this notebook. So go ahead and click over here on Templates. And then we're going to use the RunPod PyTorch 2 template. So we'll go ahead and click Deploy. Now, for ease of use, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this on an A100, but you can probably get away with deploying it on a 4090. I'm just going to deploy it on the slightly faster machine since, you know, we're doing a tutorial and your time's valuable, right? So click Deploy. And then you'll want to go ahead and make sure your container disk and your pod volume are both at about 50 gigabytes because these are some pretty hefty models. Now make sure you click Start Jupyter Notebook over here because we're going to need to use that to import our new notebook. So now to start up my server, I'll just have to click Continue here and Deploy. And then My Pods. And we'll just spin this down here and we'll just have to wait a minute for the server to boot up. And so once the Connect button turns purple here, we can go ahead and click on that and then click on Connect to Jupyter Lab, and it'll open up in a new tab. Okay, now we're going to want to go ahead and import the notebook file I provided in the description down below. So we'll go ahead here, and you'll see it's called RunPod Deep Floyd IF Notebook IPYNB. Uh, so go ahead and click on that. It'll warn you that there's a large file size. That's okay. Um, you know, it's a large file. It'll take a second. So go ahead and just click Upload anyway. Now, you'll just need to wait a minute or two while the notebook uploads. Uh, like it said, it'll take a second. Just keep an eye on your file in your workspace folder and wait for the last modified property to show at least two minutes. It should have uploaded by then. Now, just go ahead and double-click the notebook, and it should open up. 
Okay, now it's time to run the notebook. Uh, this is the fun part, clicking play several times and waiting. First, we have to run this first cell here to install all of our dependencies so everything can run properly. So we'll just click into the cell here and then click play. Uh, you'll know it's done when it says you've successfully installed protobuf. Okay, and there we go, it's successfully installed protobuf. Now from here, it's a fairly simple process of clicking on a cell, clicking play, waiting for some sort of output to appear, then repeating the process for each cell. This will download a bunch of models, scripts, and other stuff that makes Deep Floyd IF work, but it can take a bit. Next, we need to log into Hugging Face and grab our API key. So just click copy over here, then come back to your Jupyter Notebook tab and click play on the Hugging Face cell. It'll give you a place to paste in your API key and then go ahead and uncheck add token as git credential because you don't need it. So our token is valid, the login was successful. So now we just click into a cell, hit play, wait, click, play, wait, click, play, wait, and then click again and wait again for a while. Now I'm not gonna make you sit through all that in real time because it does take a while. It's downloading a lot of big files here, but I'll just go ahead and speed through it. Uh, slow enough that you can stop it and see what I'm doing if you run into any issues. So I'm gonna go get a drink and uh, then we'll be very back in just a minute. All right, now it's finally time to play. Each of these sections here highlights a specific feature of Deep Floyd. I'll run through the first demo and then give you a brief overview of the others so you can play with them yourself. This first sample, Dream, is just your basic image generator. You fill in the prompt right here. I'm gonna leave the one I have, ultra close-up color photo portrait of a bear at a protest, because I'm kind of working with a theme here. The count number here indicates the number of images you want to generate. The default is four, which is a good number to get options. You can also change the seed here if you don't like the options it gives you. And since I already generated some bear pics down below, I'm going to change it to something else here. Now, just click the play button and the system will get to work on your images. Again, this is going to take a minute. The script automatically generates, upscales, then stitches your images together into a grid. It also puts a little watermark on the picture, but that's easy enough to fix with in-painting or content-aware fill in Photoshop. So our images should be popping in here in just a minute. All right, here we go. Here's our images, and these are definitely uh, some pictures of bears at a protest, right? you know, uh, protest signs behind them, some readable English words back there, nothing we prompted, but yeah, these are pretty good. Okay, so the system's working. Now it's time to put some custom text in there. To include text in your image, prompt it like you would any image. Now, I'm not gonna run this one because there's only so much time in the day and it's basically the same process, but if you scroll down here, you'll see a lot of bears are people too, uh, really nice, images here that it generated. And, you know, sometimes it gets the text a little wrong, but nine times out of 10, it works. And if it doesn't, then you just change the seed or generate more options. You can also incorporate a style in your images by defining a style prompt in the next section. I put pop art, but you can swap that out for whatever style you want. Now the text is a little less readable on these samples, but that's because the style is really strong. If you have a situation where the text shows up like this, you can come up here and adjust the guidance scale and the positive mixer to hopefully get a slightly better result. In fact, if you look down here at this positive mixer setting, what that does is it allows you to layer more of the style or less of the style onto the image you generate. And as you'll see down here, uh, well, these aren't all exactly what I typed. They're a lot closer than some of the images in the pop art style. And I mean, frankly, some of these are looking really good. Now this ID cell here, dream with different prompts in one batch, provides you with a script to generate four different images with four different prompts in one go. 
It's really helpful if you want to play around with the prompts a little bit, change a word or two here or there to see if you can get a better result. And you can run them all at once, walk away for a minute, go do something else, come back, and you'll have some options to hopefully use. You'll see down here that my prompts generated four very different pictures of a bear at a protest for me. Now, if you want to get really deep into it, this next cell will allow you to apply a different style to each of those different prompts. So as you'll see here, we have an impressionist painting, a Lego bear, a Minecraft bear, and just sort of a photo of a bear holding a sign that says bear. And again, if you don't like those options, you can come up here and change the seed from 42 to whatever you want. Now this IE cell lets you add negative prompts for each picture too. So again, we can get a lot of variations and uh, make very specific variations all in one batch. Just include the negative prompts in the same order as your main prompts up here. So, you know, a vibrant professional close-up photo portrait of a bear, blah, blah, blah. And then the negative prompt is yellow. Now for the second one, if I wanted it to not include anything blue, I would change this to blue. I'm not gonna do that, but that's, that's basically the way it works. And these images came out really nice too. No yellow to be seen. Although I think it got a little confused on this guy because Lego men are yellow. So it was like, okay, well they want Lego, but they don't want yellow. I'm just gonna put a regular guy there. <laughs> this next cell lets you define an aspect ratio for your picture, like these 16 by nine versions. The last demo I'll show you is a style transfer, which is almost like a more advanced image to image that takes a source image, then tweaks it based on your prompt. For example, I took this photo of police accosting protesters, then prompted it with bears clash with police in a variety of styles. I really like this one. It's like action movie cover. Plus it has those zombie policemen, which is a lot of fun. I prompted that up top. And that's the basics of how to run Deep Floyd IF. If you want to take my template for a spin, download the Jupyter Notebook at deepfloyd.everlyheights.tv or at the Google Drive link down in the description. Thanks for joining me today, and I can't wait to share more about Everly Heights and how I'm using the latest AI technology to bring my creative dreams to life. See you next time, and watch out for those bears. Read the stories and join the team at everlyheights.tv. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Everly Heights. Watch us build Everly Heights in building dreams by subscribing to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. And why don't you like this video while you're at it to help people find our stuff, to contact us about partnership opportunities, or if you have questions about joining the team, send an email to billmeeks at everlyheights.tv.